Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean the Legion. Well, hello there, sluggers. How are you? He's Blake coming to us from 760 WJR, Mitch Album Show and Sports Rap. I'm Sean. Blake is also, for those of you that don't know, he is going to do um, a YouTube channel and a podcast on home improvements. Um, he's yeah. the only one I know who takes two weeks off to basically do home improvements. You know, other people go, hey, let's go travel someplace. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Blake has been Mr. Home Improvement Guy. Not by choice, but yeah, by choice, right? You can say that. Um, by my honey do list choice, yeah, that's the choice. <laughs> How's it been? So, what what is everything that you're doing? Just just to, to let the people know, because I get almost daily updates. So I have a three bedroom home. Two of the bedrooms were in good shape. One of the bedrooms basically had three of the walls were like wood paneling and like nasty. And the one bedroom also had two closets. So, and they were on the same wall. They were just like next to each other. So we gutted the entire room down to the studs, made one of the closets, not a closet anymore. And then we're drywalling the whole room. And how's that? It's, how's that? It's how's been, that, how's that process going? It's been something. The, uh, the joys of, I, of homeowning, right? I didn't. I never knew how that. How like, it's not even like drywall is difficult. It's just not easy, and I never knew how difficult it was. It's just you know who you should talk to, and and you think I'm joking right now, and he doesn't even know this is coming. You should talk to Todd. Well, I know Todd's offered his his hand. You you no, no like I'm I'm serious. You should talk to, to like Todd. Like he builds houses from scratch. Todd, you can come over. Do you want to come over and help me mud and tape? I'm down because my my dad. That's not in his uh, that's not in his wheelhouse. And it's definitely not mine. So I'm down. I I can't wait. And and I know Matt's on there. What's up, Matt? I can't wait. Like, I got to hear your take on Connor Stallions in a couple minutes, okay? You knew I was going to ask you about that. I think that is going to, like, break records for, oh, yeah. like, like, views. I, I'm not even being funny. I think that's going to break records. Like, seriously. I, I, I can't – I'm going to ask you about that in a second, okay? Yeah. Uh, Skydog said, like, high – how like, how heavy drywall is. No, mm -hmm. just, like, measuring it and, like – the, like just making sure everything fits correctly has not been it's an old house this house was built in the 1940s so nothing is square or level or plumb or anything so and yeah it's just been it's been great i really enjoy home improvements it is um a man Sean, have you ever done drywall before you know, well, what I was about to say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, a quote from the great Clint Eastwood. A man has to know his limitations. Okay, yes. a man has to know his limitations. And you, you've probably heard me say this way too much. I'm a huge stay in your lane guy. You know what? I get off to the side of the road and let people like Todd do crap like that. I don't know it. Like, seriously, I don't know. And I get flustered and, you know, I can be the, the big, dumb heavy that carries like heavy stuff and things like that. But it, no, I just, some people are more inclined for things like that. I'm just, I'm not one of them, man. I'm just not. So like I said, a man has to know his limitations. I just don't know crap like that. I don't. So I don't, I don't even try it. Nope. Thanks anyway. Seriously. Yeah. No, I mean, I, it's uh, it's been a learning experience. I'll just leave it at that. It's been fun, um, but it sucks. So, uh, as as Matt just said, as as Matt just said, um, 
Sean, it's Connor's side of the story. It's basically going to be a Michigan propaganda film. I, like all jokes aside, I I cannot wait for this because there are so many unanswered questions that we really know the answers to. And the likelihood of us getting the answers in this show are, aren't very high. Maybe they'll surprise me, but doesn't everybody want to watch it? And I've always respected you, Blake, because I think you and I talked about this last year and we didn't hit it a lot on, on the show we were doing at the time. And the reason we didn't hit it a lot on the show that we didn't do it all at, at, that we were doing at the time is like, we all knew what was going on. Right. Mm hmm. The the debate and and like seriously, I respect you. It's it's like yeah, this is what's going on, and I'm like yeah, that's what's going on. And and it it really, it isn't maybe as complicated as we think it is. The question, of course, that that we don't know at this point in time is how deep did it go in the Michigan program? Was this something that Coach Harbaugh ordered? Was this something that was direct benefit? You know, all of those things, but. My goodness gracious, like, I can't wait to see him try to explain the Central Michigan stuff, for example. Like, oh, I can't. The manifesto. The manifesto right? is the oh, thing. Just, it's That's bad. the thing. It's bad. Crazy, man. It really is. And I didn't say the word, so you can't tell me swear jar. You implied the jar, so. That's <laughs> but, do you remember? I mean, the, the thing about it, to, like, to me, the Central thing was so funny because people were going, Oh, dude, that's not him. Oh, yeah, no. Stop it. And then Central playing dumb in the whole process. It's like everybody knew what was going on. Don't be an idiot, you know? I also think the whole thing was very overblown. Because if you don't. If you don't think that your program is doing it, if you don't, if you're an Ohio State fan, if you're a Michigan State fan, if you're a Rutgers fan. If you're a Purdue fan, I don't care what kind of fan you are. Every single Division One college football team does something. It may not be to this level, and it may not be to this extent, but every single college football team. It is. It is an undeniable. I'll take it a word. uh, uh, I'll take it further. These people that live in glass houses and think that their program doesn't cut corners Mm -hmm. and cheat, it blows my mind. Now. The word cheat comes in varying degree. Okay. There are there are huge, huge, huge canyons when, when you talk about that. But one of the funniest things that I, I used to hear people say, okay, is my program does it the right way. And it's like, are, are you serious? Hmm. Like, I really do you you can't believe that. Connor Stallions was just dumb enough to get caught. He used yep. his real name. That's the yep. only difference. Yep. So that, that's that's really, and I mean that's the thing that blows my mind is like when that stuff came out, and um, it, it was so easily traced back to him. Mm-hmm. Like, what a nut job! No. Like, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Some comments from you guys. Uh, Todd said, that's why I don't smoke the weeds or do the talking. Know thyself. It's true. It's just the older I get, like the more, like I dig my heels in on that. They're just things I don't know. Like, I'm telling you what you can, Blake, you, you, I'm sure you know this already, like electronical stuff. No, not yet. Zero. No, you've got that. I disagree with though, because you've gotten a lot better. But at the same time, and like, you're not as unwilling to like learn. You're willing to learn electronic stuff. You know, you know where I got that from, though. Like honestly, I got it from my parents. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge if you teach a man to fish type of person, and my parents just like I tried to teach him so many things, and they ah like that. And so I was like, I swear I'm never going to be like that. But like, uh, hey, we got a new TV. Can you set the TV up, Kristen? No, I can't. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll carry it. I'll do like all the, but hooking up and HMI five, nine, three, all those numbers and all that crap. What the hell do I know? I don't know a damn thing. All right. Let me, a bunch of comments on here. Let me, let me catch up with this. 
Um, Eric said, Blake, can I get a gold color that rhymes with glue? Go blue. Uh, Stallion is yesterday's news. Well, he's going to be news again when this comes out on Netflix. It is going to be. You think they're giving him a bag to do that? Like, that's, that's the only way he's. Or he's mad that he didn't get hired by Harbaugh in LA. Gotta be. Like, seriously. Just, just, I don't think he'd ever like completely throw the program under the, the bus though. I don't think no. that no way that's not coming. No. I, I mean, he, so. he had ample opportunity. He's going to, I, w- I am willing to lay money. He takes full responsibility in it. Uh, Matt said, could you imagine if Michigan state cheated for three years, the Detroit papers would have every detail of the scandal out there in 72 hours. It's a year later and nothing from the media. Oh, I know a certain Detroit news columnist would be all over it to Matt's point. And his name rhymes with Lojo. Uh, um, you can figure out the rest from that. Uh, Sparties have to get past this. Finally, last year, Harbaugh ran up the score to make that point. Well, you know what? If the NCA comes down and they can prove that there was a direct line or something like that, I think all bets are off. I don't think they ever will, though. I, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think. I think the come. whole thing is over. Yeah, I really, I really don't. Um, well, that, that's the, I mean, for for the people out there that say, you know, why are we talking about this? In case you missed it, there's going to be a Netflix special, like coincidentally to coincide with the start of college football season. So, um, yeah, it's, it's part of that like watch things ever. It's part of that like untold thing, right? Yeah. Like with the, did you watch? Did you ever watch the one about Florida? The urban no. Mm-mm. Okay, don't. Mm-mm. Really, it's waste of time. Total. It's a. It's an Urban Meyer puff piece. So, if I'm not mistaken, the first one out is is like the the murder of Steve McNair, and then a week later they're coming out with the Connor Stallions one, right? Okay. Yeah, they and did me- this. They did that last year with uh, Johnny Manziel and then the the Florida one. You know, the, I never saw that one either. I never. I the Manziel that. one's good. Yeah, I never. I never saw that one either. The Gosh. Manziel one's good, but the, the Florida one is literally an urban puff piece, and it makes me sick to my stomach. Jason said, uh, Shauner knows how to hit a button on a blowhorn now. Thank you. I just hit that. Last year, the only thing I really learned was three schools, Ohio State, Purdue, and Rutger, Rutgers share it legal. If one, U of M does it illegal. Um I think what's going to be interesting about this and, and where it separates Sky Dog is this is a guy that was an employee of the university that bought tickets and in particular was on the sideline in a Bobby Valentine. I showed my age for you kids out there. Look it up. I know that one. Uh, disguise. And and I think that's that's where the paths separate. But to your point, and, and Blake brought this up earlier, you're out of your mind if you don't think that people are caught in corners. I sorry. And and I've had so many people get mad at me for saying that over the years. And it's just like, man, what planet do you live on? Like, yeah, you're jaded. You're delusional. Like, honestly, come on, give me a give me also, a break. Like, believing it or not believing it is also the most like college football thing ever. The whole thing is the most college football thing ever. Yeah. Matt said it's a propaganda piece on Urban Sean. You would think Florida didn't even have a serial killer. At Seriously, the time. like yeah. they didn't even bring up like Chris Rainey, just like beating the hell out of his girlfriend at yeah. at one point. They didn't bring like the Pouncy twins, like and everything that they went through was like barely a part of it. It's just it's wild. I'm gonna be intrigued because if if it's if it's a fluff piece. If it's a fluff piece, they're gonna get killed. If if that's if that's what they want to put out there, if it's if it's a fluff piece. Did you um, did you watch the Manti Teo one? Yes, that was outstanding. It was really good. And I, I think you and I talked about it. I was always of the opinion that that guy was lying through his teeth. And after watching that. I, like I, I, I'm not joking, and this is going to sound horrible, but I'm going to say it anyway. He really is that dumb. Like that—that that was my takeaway from that. I, you and I talked about that, right? I think we did, right? He, yeah. Like, like, do you agree with me? I mean, way back when I was like, "Oh my gosh, how could anybody buy this?" 
But after watching that, he, he's like that dumb. And I don't mean dumb. Like, obviously, he went to school and graduated and all that stuff. Just like, I don't know, like street smart or something. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, he really was that dumb. Yeah. Tiger, Tigers need a Tigers win again. My goodness gracious. Have they like the I I mean this genuinely, and I just want everyone out there to know this. I haven't paid attention to anything that's going on in not just sports, but in like the world. I have well, no idea. You're have the Tigers been playing well, like since the All Star break? They've been they've been playing well. If I'm not mistaken, they have the best record in July so far. And so now they've worked their up way up to golly gee, two games under five hundred. How many and games so- out of the wild card? Uh, it was six starting today. So depending on how things shake out ahead of them, five and a half, five, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, and, and of course now people are saying the Tigers should buy, which I, I think would be insane. I, I do. Um, because they're just not that good. They really aren't. They're not that sorry. I know, I know the bats have perked up and everything, but, um, you know, I mean, there are that many games left and they, you know, the, the beautiful thing about a baseball season is the ebbs and flows. And, and I think more often than not, you know, there are always exceptions to the rule, but you're in the general area of you are what your record indicates. There are teams that get hot and, you know, turn a bad start into, um, you know, a, a special season or, you know, no offense to Eric, our resident Yankee fan a month ago, the Yankees were like, wow, oh my gosh, this team's going to have 110 wins. And, you know, then they, they falter water kind of finds its level like that. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what happens over the course of 162 game season more often than not, you see those ebbs and flows, but I don't know, man, I, I don't, I don't. So what do you think they'll do? They'll just stand pat? I think there sure seems to be a lot of um, chatter about Scooble. And if some of the reports are correct, like I saw one today that the Yankees are willing to part with their top five prospects. Um, The the Oreo package intrigues me more because Holiday is, I told you all along, I don't want prospects. Holiday is is close to a major league ready type of situation as possible. You know, I know he came up and he struggled a little bit, but when I use the term prospects, I'm talking about all those losers that the Tigers got for JV and and for JD. And that's a kind of, well, we'll see this guy in two or three years. No, you know what? I want a known. I want a major league ready guy. And I think Holiday's a major league ready guy. And if you package that with a couple of other, you know, highly touted prospects that, you know, might not be even next year, but you know, okay, there's an, okay. That, that makes me feel a little better. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean? That makes me feel a little better. And then if that happens, if that happens, then forget about it. You know, because then for sure, there's no doubt about that. Although I'm pretty sure it's going to happen anyway. You have to let go of Flaherty, you know, but I mean, there are people out there now saying, well, we need to buy, we need to buy. And I'm sorry. I, I, two games under 500. No, I'm sorry. It just, you know, I, I, I don't like it. Why would you buy to stay, to be mediocre? Yeah. No, I feel the same way. Or just, you know, hooray. We made the wild card and we lost. Great. The wild card uh, nowadays is like the plan. Urban Meyer is the slimiest of slime, and people from the teams he coached call others cheaters. Okay, pal, just avoid mirrors. I, Jason, you probably knew this about me. And I'm, I'm Blake. I don't know if you listened to me back in the day when you were a young kid. I, one of the strangest things in my entire lifetime was the free pass that the national media gave Urban Meyer. I, I never. I never understood it. I it just, he, he consistently talked out of both sides of his mouth consistently. And, uh, you know, I get it. He was uber successful with Florida. And then he went to OSU and was uber successful, but this was more in the, you know, uh, aftermath of, of his time in Florida and, and, and just the free pass that people gave him. I, I didn't, I you didn't like get the, it. Like, the fake health issues or the still, letter to his family. 
I still believe, I still believe he's going to coach again. I really do. Oh yeah. A thousand it's, percent. It's, it's, still believe he's going to coach again. Uh, I mean, there, if, remember the rumor last year? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. He was on campus at MSU. Everyone thought he was coming to MSU for a minute. <laughs> it's like, there's no me. way. Don't say everyone. Um, if the oh, well, Tigers no. be buyers, who the hell do they have to trade for that certain rental thing? Sky Dog, this goes back to the conversation I've had with Red Wing fan for 20 years. To get something, you have to be willing to give up something. Okay? That's good math. And and what are the Tigers prepared to do? Really? What are they, what are they prepared to do? Because you have to always, I always say the same thing, flip the flipping script, okay? Yeah. Flip the script, okay? Be the other guy. If if I'm, pick a team, any team. I don't, I, don't, I don't give a crap. One of the contending teams. If I'm the Yankees, okay? Who are you calling for? And if the Tigers are buying, then are you willing to part with some of the golly gee, can't miss prospects of the next generation. Are you willing to do that? You know, and, okay. and that's the thing that that I have a question. I, I, it blows my mind. It blows my my mind. Could you flip Flaherty for like a rental the other way? I like, is there any team that's in that position that doesn't no, need a bat I, but needs a pitcher? I think that I think Flaherty is going to go to a high contender. Um, and he he's going to be. I don't know, Blake, the, the best way to put it is, you know, Scooble's going to be the filet mignon, and uh, Flaherty's going to be a nice New York strip. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a New York strip. I, I think it's it's incredibly underrated, as a matter of fact, the New York strip. And you know what? Some teams, you add a New York strip to the menu, and all of a sudden you're looking really good. And and I think Flaherty could be the New York strip in, in this kind of thing. Whereas, you know, everybody's going to want to go for the filet. You know, I get it. That's that's just, I get I it. Don't, I don't get it. I don't, un, like, why would you trade, like, a Cy Young winner? I don't, I don't understand that logic. And, like, I understand it happens in baseball. I don't get it. What are you getting in return? I don't need future. I need now. Like in every other sport, if I make a trade, it gives me something now. Yeah. But in baseball, no. we're cool with waiting. Yeah. I, it, that does not, that doesn't compute for me. Hockey's the same way. Hockey's yeah, but just, hockey, yeah. it doesn't take nearly as long. Well, with some guys, if, if you some get guys, the kid that yeah. was just drafted. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it, 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 it makes me, but still in hockey, you can still trade for ready-made like ready-made guys for ready-made sure, guys. Sure. Sure. In baseball, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Todd said ribeye. See, like I said, like, give me the marbling. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I just want that New York strip, man. Just give me a good, medium, rare New York strip. It, it seems like everybody else is it wants to pick something else, and it's like, well, I'll, I'll take the strip. That's a it's a darn good steak, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I have steaks steak in my freezer. Like well, I, I was about to, to say that, that might be that might be that might be my impetus now to to go grill some steaks for. Lauren and I more on Lauren in a second, if you don't mind, but, um, I have to, you and I just BS dude. Like it's, it's unbelievable. It's I like, really, I, I missed you. You know, I've been doing all this house shit. I miss talking to my friend. I miss no, not having to you really miss me. No, I really, I, I shot. Come on. Joking if I hated 30, this, did I mentioned 33 days to college football season yet. Did I, did I mention that or no? Have you, have you realized we're we've done sixty one episodes of this dumb show? How dumb is that? Um, <laughs> let me talk to you about all about catering. All about catering LLC is a full service caterer. Graduations, weddings, bridal showers, corporate events, anything you need catering for from twenty five to four thousand people. All about catering will take care of you. Customer service and satisfaction is their number one goal. They've done multiple parties for me, guys. They're going to take care of you, Rick and his staff, second to none. So don't sweat your next big event. Just go to allaboutcateringllc.com today to see their menus and all their five-star reviews or give them a call 
586-731-1398 to get your event started. So did you, I know you've been busy, but did you hear about this Microsoft shutdown or whatever? That yeah, shut I couldn't get Starbucks the other day because of it. I was pissed. Really? Yeah. The Starbucks by my house was closed literally because of it. Jeez. So did you know, did you know my daughter was in uh, Tokyo? You knew that, right? You told me that. Yeah. Yeah. My, my daughter was in Tokyo, which listen, this is every parent's dilemma. She's 19. I can't say no. Hey dad, I want to go to Tokyo. Is that okay? Well, she's 19. Like she's going, I got my own money, which everybody knows what that means. She has some of her own money, but she's going to take some of mom and dad's money too. And, and so like begrudgingly, I, I, I said, you're 19 now. You know, if you want to go, go. Do what you need to do. Go. Okay. Um, so it hit when she was in Tokyo. So she was stranded. She was stranded. Uh, she got stranded in Tokyo. And then she finally got a flight back to the States. And she got stranded in Minneapolis. Well, her friend that she went with, like, had to leave a day early. So, oh, by the way, she's by herself the entire time. And so I ran, I ran into something Saturday. This is why I didn't bug you guys Saturday. I ran into something Saturday, like four o'clock. They said, we're just not flying out today. You know, hopefully we'll do it tomorrow. It might be Monday. So Blake, I'm not joking. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm sitting there going, okay, do we take the chance that maybe just maybe she flies out tomorrow? Because I'm not going to have her stay at the airport for two straight days after what she endured in, yeah. in Tokyo and then endured in Minneapolis. And I literally sat back and I was like, okay, do I jump in my flipping truck and drive 10 hours to Minneapolis to go pick her up? Like, I'm not joking. I, I like, I was having that conversation going, okay, if I leave now and it takes, it says yeah. it takes 10 hours, I have a little bit of a lead foot, but let's use 10 hours. Is If I leave now, I get there at three o'clock in the morning. We get back at, you know, one o'clock, one thirty in the afternoon. Or do we take the chance that maybe she gets a chance to fly out tomorrow? And of course, I was about to say the the airline, but I'm not going to say it. Um, the airline, their first inclination was, well, we'll get you a voucher or something like that. Well, here's the problem. Everybody else is stuck. Yeah. So there was, there was no place. There was no room in the inn for her. So literally, she had a cot. My 19-year-old daughter had a cot in the airport, and uh, that's where she kind of slept. Like, how miserable is that? Jesus. But Jesus. I see, now Now I have to ask you guys. Okay. Uh, I have to ask you a question, though. All right. So Matt said, Tokyo is amazing, one of the safest cities, uh, but the travel is brutal. Uh, Lauren swears by it. She's been two years in a row. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. And, like, to the point where, like, she goes, Dad, you and I saw some of the pictures, the cleanest streets I've ever seen. I was like, what the heck? And I'm trying to compare that with the crap hole that I was just at a couple of weeks ago, L.A., which, honest to goodness, I mean, it's it's filthy. That mm -hmm. is not an opinion. That is 100% fact. It, it is a filthy city. And I saw these pictures from Tokyo. And I was like, holy crap. So here's my question. Let me throw my question at you before you, you counter question. I don't even know if that's a thing. Have you ever been stranded? What's your worst? What's your worst traveling experience? Do you have a worst traveling experience? Okay, I've. You have to remember, I've flown once in my adult life. Really? Yes. I don't really go very much, many places. Like I've been to Colorado twice. One of the times I took a bus. Um. You know what? I will say. Okay. My senior year, my my senior spring break trip, I went to Florida and we went on a cruise and it, I drove. OK, so yeah. it was me, my mom and one of my friends who I'm no longer friends with. And this story is why I'm no longer friends with them. Oh, boy. We're we're coming off of the cruise ship. And this this young man somehow uh, got weed while he was on the boat. When you're coming off of a cruise ship, they have drug dogs. He got detained. And he was my mom's responsibility. 
we had to sit there at customs. I had to sit there for like six hours by myself because my mother was back there trying to deal with this. Mind you, again, I'm like, I'm not a weed guy at all. Neither. And my mom is like very anti. So we got stuck at customs because this kid got busted for pot coming off of a cruise ship. And it was like such a a small amount of weed. It was like, yeah. So that was my worst travel. I had buddies that flew after the cruise. I was still stuck at customs. They were already flown home in their driveways. Dude, come on. Brutal. So, yeah, that was my worst one. I I had a bad flying experience, but I'll share one because it's my buddy, Mike. And and I may have told you this. We went to um, Montreal in 92 and we drove. And everybody was talking about this massive snowstorm that was going to hit. And um, we got to Toronto in a very quick amount of time. And we're like, what are they talking about? And when this thing hit, I, I'm not joking. It, I've never seen it snow so hard to the point where by the time we kind of got through the the GTA, the greater Toronto area, um, the 401 was closed. The big, the big highway that goes up like all the way through and then up to the border in Quebec where you have to jump on Highway 20. It was closed. So we got off, we got off the highway and I went to an OPP post. Uh, Ontario Provincial Police, and I asked the guy, I said, listen, staying here is not an option. We're we're going to the hockey game. Um, like, what's the best route to get there? And I kid you not, this is a true story that the police officer said to me. He said, as a member of the Ontario Provincial Police, I'm advising you to stay in Peterborough tonight. That's how bad the storm is. He said, as a hockey fan, I will tell you, go about five kilometers up, take a right on Highway 2, and that'll take you. And he goes, it's not going to be an easy ride. Uh, 17 hours later, no joke, 17 hours later, we made it to Montreal. We even picked up a hitchhiker. Really? I, I just decided there was some dude, like, walking in this massive blizzard hitchhiker. Was he nice? He was wonderful. And it was funny because I should have Mike tell you this story because um, Mike was in the back seat. It was me and my buddy Ted in the front seat. And and we both aren't right in the head. And um, Mike goes, at first I was kind of worried. And then I said to myself, well, the guy that we pick up can't be any more nuts than the guys in the front seat. So I'm cool like that. That was like Mike's logic. And we, <laughs> we had we had a blast. We had a blast with this guy. And, and we were like, where do you need a ride to? And he was like, can you take me like all the way to Cornwall, which was pretty far away. He, he was probably in the car with us seven hours. Just had a blast with the guy. Like it was, oh. blast. But it was, dude, I'm not joking. Like the, the pouring snow, like my eyes hurt so badly. I can't even explain it to you. And so like before anything happened, I go, I got to shut her down. Like I, I went straight to the hotel and I, j- I just shut her down because I, I've never seen it snow like that. And then, of course, like you see in the newspaper the next day, they're like, oh, the biggest storm since 1631 or some crap like that. But gosh, damn it. We made the hockey game. I'll have That's you know right. that. And I'll also add the Habs beat the Bruins. So it was a double, double win. <laughs> so, OK, yeah. but what I was going to ask you about, Lauren, like, OK. You know people mm-hmm. from your adventures in college football and such. I know where this is going, but go ahead. Did you did you make a call? I thought about it. Okay. Um, I I'm not going to say it. You know, I know somebody up that way, and yes. Jason knows I know somebody because that somebody used to be on my show every week. Um, that was a person that I thought of, and then there were a couple other people that I thought of, and I asked Lauren. And she said, I don't want to do that. I don't feel comfortable. I don't know these people. And somebody asked, did they at least give her some privacy? No. They, like, literally gave her, like, a cot. They all went in the area. And and that's what she said. She was like, Dad, I I couldn't sleep. I had two giant bags with me from Tokyo. It's like, you know, I'd sleep and then I'd wake up and my head would be on a swivel and everything. So the poor kid got home. We finally, I finally got her yesterday. 
she went to bed at 930 and she slept until 1030. And then she woke up for about two hours and then took another two hour nap. Oh, do I miss those days? I miss those days. I, I miss last days. night I, after doing drywall and everything all day, I think I, I legit passed out on the couch cold at about 1130. And then I woke up at 10 this morning. No kidding. To my, I'm, it was a call from my dad saying I'm on my way back over oh, to finish. Geez. And then we didn't finish. <laughs> uh, by the way, Matt said, Sean, that's straight out of a Fargo episode. True story. Like you can add next time when we do what the puck, Blake asked Mike. It was it was crazy. I've never seen it snow like that. Jim said, was the Hitcher a Leaf fan? No, he's, he wasn't an NHL fan. He was an OHL fan, which suited me just fine. You know, they, they obviously this is before I broadcast in the OHL, but I was an OHL fan first. So, uh, yeah. So we like we talked junior hockey and eh, really nice guy. You know, I, I never asked him what the hell are you doing hiking in a massive snowstorm, but yeah. we took him like all the way all the way to Cornwall, and he was like, "Thank you, I don't have any money to give you," and I was like, "I don't want any money, dude. I'm glad I could help you out." Is that something you would do today? Never. Okay, just making sure never. we're on the same page. I I told you there was something broken in me when I was younger. I I just there when was you something. were younger, it there was a lot of things broken. Now there's just a few things broken. There was a lot of things broken in me when I and I didn't. Yeah, I I just didn't fear anything. I just yeah. I don't know. It was you know you don't fear anything. Like my brain back then is I don't, I don't have anything to lose. I'm I'm a loser. What, what do I have to lose? I don't have anything to lose. Um, so yeah, um, now, yeah, it's totally different. Biggest yeah, wuss in the yeah. history of mankind. Uh, Skydog said, while I'm thinking of a certain horror flick from 1974 that goes by the letters TCM. <laughs> yeah, you, you really are. I, I don't like, I'm not recommending going and picking up a, uh, a, uh, hitchhiker. I, I hope that you didn't come away with that from that story. No, I'm not. Yeah, no. Hey, Sean Belegian here for picking up hitchhikers. No, we're not. We're not going. <laughs> we can get a read for that, though. We could probably find one. We uh, can get a sponsor. Can I tell you about the Wealth Advantage Group? If, That's if you, even better. If you give a call to the Wealth Advantage Group, you don't need to hitchhike because you're going to have multiple cars because these guys are going to take care of you. If you're ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group. Located in historic downtown Northville and owned by those two guys, the Hanson Brothers, with over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are, and that's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 different states. Look, the investment world, it is a complex one. So if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, to stay in your lane, to know your limitations, it's time to work with the experts. This is what they do. Reach out to the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574. That's 248-773-8574. Or visit their website at www.thewealthadv.com. Okay, there there is some... There is some uh, confusion, Blake, and I need you to set the record straight yeah, because I had a bunch of people say that. Don't, don't, yeah, what's up, me? You're in. You're begrudgingly in, but you're in, right? I don't have a choice. But you're in, right? I don't have a choice. Okay, so listen. Do you, wanna, do you want me to turn off the bit or leave the bit? No. Stay on. Okay. The bits on. Stay on. Yeah, I, um, I'm in. Yeah. Jason said, yes, us youpers oop, laugh at Southern Ontario snow just so we don't cry. Um, yeah, the, you know what? It's different. U P and like that area, like once you get around like Lake Ontario, man, does it bomb there? Those are those are just two places that the yeah. snow comes down. All right. So your lions and you love the lions, right? We've established that. Yeah. Your lions. Big fan. Camp starts this week. 
Camp starts mm-hmm. this weekend. What's your uh, What's your biggest fear with these lines? The your lines, I mean. The defense. The entire thing. Just the entire thing? Yeah. I don't think it's fixed, so. Are some of your are some of your concerns alleviated by the secondary? The two rookies. I'm I'm I'm, I'm actually more optimistic about the secondary. I got to be honest with you. I don't I don't like what they did on the D line. I like DJ Reader. I think they needed another edge really badly. I do too. I don't, I think- and I don't think Hutch. I I'm this is coming from a Michigan fan. Mind you, I do not think Aiden Hutchinson is a in an elite defensive end in the NFL. I never thought he was going to be. I think he's pretty damn good. He's good. He's a very very good. But like he's not. He's not. I don't. I just think I, you need someone opposite him. I appreciate you saying that because it. This is. I, I'm sorry. It's something that. We've talked about many times, hi, Dylan Larkin. Um, I, I think especially when it's a quote-unquote local guy, they mm-hmm. just have the tendency to put him on a pedestal that, that maybe he doesn't belong yet. Like, I'm not willing to say he's not going to get there. It's still far too early in his career, That's okay? But I, I think that sometimes people people want to put him on a, on a pedestal. I think he's a damn good player i think there's another level there i really do and and do you know why i say that because at times and i hope you would agree with this blake at times he looks dominant you know what makes the dominant ones dominant when they when they're dominant all the time Mm -hmm. you know what i mean that like like honestly uh matt said only thing i don't get about holmes is he hates the de position uh, two straight years, they do nothing here. Trade for Judon. Saw that kid at Grand Valley. Interviewed that kid at Grand Valley. I know there's some mileage on the tires right now, but my goodness gracious, if you could go get a guy like that to have him play back here in the state of Michigan, I'd be happy as a pig and crap. I really would be. Yeah. I, I like I said, I think Aiden Hutchinson is... Hutchinson is a fine defensive end. I don't think he is an elite defensive end. So I think yeah. he needs someone opposite of him to help. And I don't think DJ Reader is going. I mean, DJ Reader is like a gap filler, an incredible D tackle. He's going to help the run defense a lot. And he may help some with pass rush, but he's not what they needed, in my opinion. Do you like the Lions? Are you a big fan? No, you're in. You're in. Don't, don't, you can't shake your head. You're in. You I are. I didn't shake in. my head. I didn't say anything. I, I get. I, just because I'm in, that doesn't mean I'm not allowed to be critical. No, dude, listen. I, I, look, Matt said he's not Bosa. Uh, Hutch was missing in action versus San Francisco. I, now all three of us, at least you, me, and Matt, are on the same page. I to me, I want to see it more. When he takes over, it's impressive. And we've seen him take over, right? We we we've seen him dominate. Mm-hmm. I, I I just think the next level is to see it more often. I really do. I think I think the next level is to see it more often. Um and, and again somebody's gonna take that as why are you guys dog and hutch? And it's like no hear me I I I think I think highly more highly of him than you do, Blake. Honestly, if I'm hearing you correctly, yeah, you I think do. I, I'm, 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 I'm serious. Um, linebacker. I just don't think that. A, sorry, go ahead. I'm lagging because I was looking something up. No, I don't think eleven and a half sacks is is elite. I just don't. So, I need more. Would you agree with me that at times he was flat out dominant and near yeah. unstoppable? Like, yeah, but and, then and there's I, also times where he doesn't show up. I ju- I just want to see it more often. Yeah. Like honestly, I, I just think- want consistency. Yeah, I so, to so. me that's what separates you know the great ones, and I, I that's why I say he's still so young in his career. I I'm not putting the blanket statement out there. You know what I mean? Um. 
I think there's a next level there, though. I really do. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to ask you right now, because we've literally not done this in, what, about two and a half months since the schedule came out. What's your win total? If I said to you, over, under for Lion wins, what would you say? Ten and seven. See, I was going to say ten and a half. Like, literally, literally I was going to say ten and yeah. a half. Would you say the under or the over? Under. Really? Yeah. I'd take that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've said from the beginning that I think they're losing week one, and everyone's going to lose their mind. I, I, the sky will be falling if they lose that can game. I, can, I, can I say this? Can I, for a lot of people, yes. Can I say this, though? I Like, honestly, I don't care so much about the regular season final record. I really don't. Now, I take that back. If they go nine and eight and miss the playoffs, or they go eight and nine and miss the playoffs, yes, I care about the regular season. I, I like honestly, I couldn't care less if they go ten and seven or the and are the five seed. I really, I don't, I don't, because now this is a team that has been there and done that, and and I have well, some faith that they might be able to flip a switch come playoff time, just by the mere fact that they won two games last year. But w- you want the buy. Of course you do. Yes. Yeah. But I'm not going to have I'm to not, win 12 to get the buy. I'm not going to lose my mind is what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to be one of those people. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh. Look, I've seen too many teams meander their way through a regular season and get hot and put it all together at playoff time. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. I, if if I hadn't seen that before. Hi, Eli Manning. I, may, maybe I wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't. Patrick Mahomes last year. Right. I, I've seen it. I've seen it way too many. Remember, the Giants had like zero pass rush in 2011. And all of a sudden, at the end of the year, something strange happened. They got healthy and they got a pass rush. And they made the greatest quarterback I've ever seen life miserable in that Super Bowl. You know what I mean? And and so to me, that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. It's like I'm not I'm not going to get wrapped up in it like in years gone by. Yes, in a perfect world, like uh, Dave said, I would love twelve and five, win the stupid division again, and get a bye. I would love that. Now, although, let's be honest, is is twelve going to be enough? But you you get my point. Um, but if they don't do it, like honestly. I'm just not going to lose my mind over it. I'm just not. No, I just, I know what's going to happen. People are going to lose their mind when they lose week one. That's going to be like, uh, the sky is falling. We're going to hear about it for a whole week. I don't, I don't, 13 and four, and the offense will be the best in the NFL. I love their offense. I'm sorry. I love their offense. I do. I, I, I do. I love their offense. That's it. But we also disagree on that because I hate their receivers. You know, you know what the thing is? Again, there isn't there isn't a bona fide stud, although I'm on saying, you know, I'm on raw could be well, he'll tell you he's a bona fide stud number one. Okay. But to me, it I think what you saw last year is distribution, and that's what made them so damn deadly. Mm -hmm. And their tight end, look at how good he was last year. Like, what's Laporta gonna do year two? You know, I mean, say what you want, make make Iowa jokes, all that stuff. But my goodness gracious, that kid was a force. No, Sam Laporta is already a top five tight end. Yeah, one hundred percent. So now, and this is this is why I love what Brad Holmes is doing. I think that there's a next level for Aiden. I think that there's a next level for Laporta. Um, and, and those are the things that have me excited. I, I I love this offense, and there isn't a whole lot of special about it. It's it's just it's kind of like pick your poison. Which which way do you want? Which way do you want to get us? You know, it's like getting that. Everything comes back to food with me. You know that sampler platter. Oh look, I got a couple buffalo chicken tenders. That's for you, Blake. I know you don't like those damn bones. I got a couple potato skins. Oh, I got some guac and queso over here. I I can do it in a bunch of different ways, and that that's what I like about their offense. That's what I I, I like about their offense. Uh, Eric said, "What up, Sean? Hi, Eric. Uh, the longer, the better for the Lions." Uh, there's a Netflix special with St. Brown we haven't talked about yet. I, I haven't seen it. Have you seen I it? I haven't seen whole, it. I watched the whole thing, yeah. Did you like it? 
Um, it was no, okay. You, just okay. You no, and I, are I both, we're the kings of it was okay. We, uh, we really- I find I find Amon Ra to be one of the corny. I know people love him in this town. I find him so corny. I really do. I like find him insufferably corny. Yeah. I, I like, like I like the first episode he did the whole a uh, name every player that was drafted before him and that whole bit. And then my dad told me to catch 201 balls because this guy caught 200. Like I don't I, I think it's corny, dude. Just play football. Period. I don't know uh, hear about it. Receiver is worth watching. It got me hyped for football. Okay. That's enough for me. I, because I, I like I, I've said this forever. Like, not this is the worst part for me. Like, seriously, the next four weeks and five days, I'm dying. Like, I, I can't I can't wait to watch the Hall of Fame game. I can't watch wait to watch fake football. Like, I mean that. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. We're at B dubs tonight. More on B dubs in a second, by the way. We were at B dubs tonight. Uh, Mike and I, and, and they had on like the NFL network and they were showing the Steelers bills wild card game. And I was just going, I need football in my life. Like I really, really need football in my life. You know, I just need the fall. I need fall. I need that weather. I need that. I need the cider mill. I need the football. I need the relaxation. I need all of it. I told you August 24th is like a holy day. You have mm-hmm. the cider mill opening and college football returns. It is. It's a holy day. My goodness gracious. Um, I, I have to bring up B-dubs because you and I are on the same page, and I think it's going to be an unpopular opinion, and I don't care. But let me tell you about our friends at Legacy first. Did you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? Our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large and small. Now, Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And yeah, help save you some money. Couldn't we all use a little bit of that? At this current time, chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're paying too much and you could be underinsured. So what are you waiting for? Give Legacy Partners a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Call them today. 586-209-4106. Get your quote. Come on. What are you waiting for? Or you can visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Blake, I don't even think you know this yet. I'm doing... Um, I think, gosh, is it six games, eight games at the prep kickoff classic? I'm literally broadcasting that many games. Before oh, really? Football starts. Yes, I can't wait. All the ones like, are the, are you doing all the games that the prep football classic? That's the games at Wayne State, right? At Wayne State, yeah, yeah. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna have them with our friends from um the Detroit sports commission and, and state champs. So I'm, I'm calling all those games. They're like, you want to do all the games? I was like, yes, I need football in my life. So those are long things. I don't care. I'm, I'm totally cool with it. You know, do you know the matchups yet? Like, yes, you know them off the top of your head? I don't know them off the top of my head. No, no. I just want to know if there's any of, uh, you know, my BWAC, my BWAC teams in there, but probably could, not. Could, we don't get any love. Can I can I bring this up though? And I'm I'm really intrigued to hear from you guys. I think in recent years there has been a lot of slander. There has been a lot of slander. Oh, wait a second. Ivis will send in a photo of the hitchhiker. Did he really, Todd? Oh no. Oh boy, there's nothing good that's gonna there is... he is. <laughs> Why? Why? Why do you read the you never I'm read the private guy. chat? I you know never that. read the private chat. Hey, I picked up Tony Romo. Look at the 401. He's got the 401 side. Damn it, Todd. Damn it. Well um, all right. So can I ask you guys, this is for all of you guys. Do you guys slander B-dub? Like, it almost seems to me it's been popular to slander Buffalo Wild Wings for a while now, Blake. And and I'm telling dude, 
I like Buffalo Wild Wings. Like I'm I'm a fan. And and I don't I don't know the slander. Like if you want to say there are better wings, fine. Yes, there are better wings. But if you're talking about selection and convenience and a great place to sit down with some buddies and have a couple of brews and, and eat some good wings, the slander of, of B dubs inconsistency you know what you're getting yes it's the same thing every time yes there's no variation there it's not like i mean obviously there's times where you get some really good wings but you're never getting really bad wings like like what matt said b-dubs is still great when you're craving chain food wings yes Listen, I'll be the first guy to say it. I can think of three places off the top of my head where I go, nah, if I want wings, I want those wings. And and quite frankly, I'm no BS. I kind of like my own wings because I make them the way that I, I want them. You know what I mean? And, and my wings, I don't need any damn sauce. But, man, you know what? I, I go put down 15 spicy garlic wings, have a couple of beers, just sitting there, you know, with my buddy. What a great night. Yeah, what sauces are you going with? I went with uh, spicy garlic, and then um, they I hadn't been there in a long time, so they had something called jam and jalapeno, which I got to be honest with you, wasn't good. Okay. You know how they have the it's it's hot list and everything? Um, it, it was too it was too sweet. It wasn't okay. when I see jamming jalapeno, that says to me, and especially when you look at on their list of, of heat, it had it like up above uh, Caribbean jerk. So I'm thinking, all right, this will be pretty. I have spicy garlic, which isn't really spicy. I just like that garlicky flavor. And I got the jalapeno. It was too sweet. So, I, you know, it's one of those stick with what you know. I mean, for years, I was all about the Caribbean jerk. And, and then, gosh, I'd say a good decade now. It's just like I get spicy garlic. That's my jam. That's my I do. I do Parmesan garlic and honey barbecue every time. Fair. Fair. Every I get time. it. Uh, Ray said Windsor had it for some reason, but it closed. It sucks because I love the boneless wings. Oh, <gasps> he said, yeah, no, they're people. boneless wing, wings are elite. Board. Uh, Sean or cheated on Asian Zing. I, I see that was another one back in the day. Uh, it was like, yeah, Asian Zing spicy garlic's been my jam for a long time now, but it, it's funny because. I don't know. Maybe it's because, like Matt said, it's the chain place. But there's just a lot of crap that's thrown B Dub's way and slander. I, dude, you know what? Like seriously, chill out. Like you, me, Todd, Mike should go one night. Let's just go hang out at B Dub's. It, it's a it's Down. a good night. There's a good vibe. I think I think B Dub's gets disrespected. Quite frankly, I agree. Good cheese curds. Oh, the cheese curds are very good. Very, very good cheese curds. They really, are. they really are. The kids always used to get the cheese curds and then then that big giant pretzel. That was like always the queso is good there. Actually, if you get Never had that, it's not bad. Yeah, we got. Uh, Ray said, "Did you guys dunk your wings in the ranch dressing it comes with?" I am a blue cheese guy. More, I, I can, inject, I could inject the blue cheese in my veins. I, I love. I just, it's perfect to me. It's just blue cheese and and the wings are just perfect. Uh, over spicy wings sucks. It kills the taste of the point one or two. I don't want anymore. That's what we did when we were younger. Mike and I used to go on a search for like the hottest wings. And, and as your taste buds mature, I need flavor now. I, I don't, I don't want fire. Give me flavor. Like, yeah. it's just like, why, why am I eating this? This is stupid. Now, you know what? If you, if you find that fine line between good flavor and, in a little pop. That's what it's all about, you know? Uh, Cornstalker said, had fun going to one this spring to watch a Vegas game. Fun atmosphere, and I love the boneless honey barbecue. That's what I'm talking I think there's a good vibe at B-dubs, man. I think and, there's and- also, though, maybe there's some bad B-dubs. I think there's. it depends on which one, like, which one you go to. Like, I've been to one, I, uh, I'll just say where, it, the one in Port Huron, which yeah. I know is like forever and a day away for you. That one's yeah. horrible. Horrible. The one by me in Mount Clemens isn't bad, 
like their takeouts more inconsistent than their in in restaurant and then the one in chesterfield i've always had really good luck with so uh skydog said i think the biggest problem people have with b-dub is the price on them i've heard that and i've heard the size because i mean they aren't look they aren't the biggest meatiest wings they just aren't Mm -hmm. you know they they aren't but i don't know good vibe it's you would appreciate it now they have on monday and wednesdays um, but because mike and i are adults we did not take advantage of this blake they have a boneless special it was all you can eat boneless and fries for like 20 bucks I'm in. Like, I'm seriously. In. It, and, and they, Wait, they, why did you why did you have to say it like that? Oh, I can you you can eat boneless wings. You choose not to. But I, I, I because I'm an adult. Ooh, but, I'm an adult. So they said that it comes with they bring you 10 to start and fries. And then if you want more, they come in increments of six after that. Hell yeah. It's great. They're Sounds okay. like a nice night out. By the way, boneless wings are okay. I mean, give me the bone in any day of the yeah. week. But but if I'm, you know, sure, I'll have. Have them. you have you had Detroit Wing Company? No yes. free ads, but I'll yeah. give them one. Have you had their boneless? Mm-hmm. No, they're, not the boneless. Their, their boneless is incredible. Really, it's big. I'll, I'll that out. Yes. Does Tony yes. like B dubs? Do you think Tony? Do you think? I don't know. Does Hutch? Uh Ray. <laughs> Ray said, what's the oddest topping you saw? Windsor had a peanut butter flavored wing. That sounds no. horrible. That sounds terrible. Do you do ranch on pizza? No. Like ranch with pizza? No? I don't like ranch. from Jets? I don't like ranch. Wow. If, right. if I am if I have to, it, like blue cheese all the way. But I, I'm one of those weirdos. I like the chunky blue cheese, like with the chunks of blue cheese in there. That's how my old man is. Uh, buffalo hot and Thai curry and never boneless and never ranch blue cheese and bone in like a, an adult. Uh, funny thing is I'm a real sucker for little Caesars with garlic parm. Listen to me. The little Caesars like bake wings are, are a very underrated delicacy. Like I'm, I'm not joking. Like if I worked at little Caesars and they had those wings back in the day, they wouldn't have any wings in the store because I would have been making. <laughs> you would have just been eating them all. Wait, wait, I ordered three boxes of wings. What happened? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mike and I Mistakes. would like sauce dripping down our face. You know, Todd said it was a deal until 2020. They used to have much better prices in kids' meals that were cheap. I don't know, dude. All you could eat boneless with some fries for 20 bucks. That's a pretty good that's deal, right? Bad. Nowadays, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, if you could change a score of a game like they did in the Buffalo commercial, which one are you picking? Wow, it's a great question. That's a great question. Why do you have to put me on the spot like that? My initial reaction was to change the <laughs> NFC championship game, but there was no guarantee that they would go beat Kansas City in the Super Bowl because, like, right now, Patrick. Mahomes is like one of one. He is. Whether you want to admit it or not, I don't care. Quit lying to yourself. 2006, wow. Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah. It's easy for me. All right. I'll go, I'll go 2013 Michigan State Notre Dame. Honestly. And I'll, I'll I will go back in time and ask Mark D'Antonio, what in the hell are you doing? leaving Andrew Maxwell in the game, put this Connor cook kid in. That's what I would have said. And then, but it's the same thing. I think both of those end the same way. I mean, I, I don't know if Michigan state would go on and knock off Florida state. You don't know if Michigan would go on and knock off uh, Florida that year. I, I, I don't know, but yeah, I boy, I'd like to flip that around. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to. Flip yeah, and it, but for yeah, it's a win against a rival. At that yeah, point, nothing else matters. Yeah, uh, Blake, are you on cloud nine with Burrow cleared now? Uh, what do they do with Chase? They have to. They have to pay him. Somebody said. I think I don't remember who it was. Somebody said there's no elite receiver cores in the NFL. That's an elite receiver core. If T Higgins and Jamar Chase, they just have to pay them. Yeah. 
Uh, Todd said the clock operator game. I'm spiteful. I was there. What a, that was insane. 2001 Spartan Bob. It was I, like, honestly, it was, in, and this was the day, you know, the days before people could like send things. So I was in at Michigan state. If you didn't know this, like they send people down on the field and you basically line up against the back of the end zone, like at the end of the game. So like everybody was down there. So you didn't see that he caught it. You heard the roar and everything. And um, honest to goodness, I didn't look at my phone. I had, I forget the number, probably 50 messages from people. Like, and so it was funny. I, I didn't really know what was going on for about 10 minutes until like, you know, they have the, timeout time. And then of course, everybody was talking about it, you know, in the locker room and stuff like that. But it was, it was just, that's another one of those things. Look, I don't care who you root for. You know exactly what happened. Stop it. Like, just stop it. You know what happened. Didn't like, Beckman have like an incredible call of that? If I it, was, it, it was, it was more, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Brandy. It was, look at, hey, God, look at, hey, he just screaming. They got robbed, Jim. That's what Beckman was saying over and over. Mm -hmm. They got robbed, Jim. That was, uh, yeah, they did get robbed. Look, I don't, Matt, and I know you're a Spartan through and through as well. Yep. Yep. Spartan Bob got him. That play took much longer than, you know, the half a second. Like, come on. It's, it's okay to say it. I'm not going to apologize for a victory. But that's exactly what happened. Come on. All right. You want to talk about I can't believe how long we went. I know. You I didn't did even this. get to ask. I didn't even get to ask you what you're afraid of with the lines. We save that for next time. Um. No, I said save it for next time. Okay. You, All right. Have you well, done I, this I, before? I, I agreed with you on the one. I agreed with you on the one. And then I kind of brought up the other that I don't think anybody's talking about personally, but. We'll, we'll get into that next time as camp opens. All right. Um, let's talk a few times this week. I miss talking to my friend. I'm down. I guess I my friend. See? Hey, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Lindsay Broadwell. When it's time to buy a house, sell a house, both, you need to contact the right agent. Who is the agent? Right there. Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make. And that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business. And when it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when finding your new home. Buyer, seller, first-time buyer, doesn't matter. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. <laughs> Lindsay wouldn't sell you a house on a floodplain. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Thank you, Matt. Poor Blake. No, Matt's right. Matt wouldn't. Lindsay would not sell me a lemon of a house. Matt also said ND 2013 Michigan State wins the natty. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate everything about it. I, I just... The Andrew Maxwell, the the infatuation was sticking with Andrew Maxwell, and then Connor Cook went on and just had an unbelievable career at Michigan State. It just, oh, I hate thinking about it. Everybody talks about the pass interference call, okay? I like honestly, and I love Coach D'Antonio, but I, the the insistence on keeping Andrew Maxwell in made me pull hair out of my head. I just it made me loony, you know, and whatever okay anything else <laughs> god damn it Tom. <laughs> is that a limo what is that lion's limo baby you're in the lion's limo <laughs> where am i which one's supposed to be me None of these guys are fat enough to be me, so it's not me. <laughs> Will you put up the B Dubs picture just one more time? Please? Look at that dumb picture. It's the greatest day of both their lives. <laughs> Which one is supposed to be me? I don't know. You're both lovers. That's all. 
They both uh, look like Tony. Uh, Sean, do you remember how dumb the MSU media was saying Maxwell won the job? That was totally Mark D being stubborn. Absolutely it was. That's when I had the rant. It was funny. Blake, I'm sorry. Let, very quickly, okay? No, you're good. I, I, you're I will you. never understand as long as I live how questioning your coach or questioning your general manager means that you hate the coach or general manager. It's not an all or nothing thing, man. Like both things can be true. I can love Mark D'Antonio, but that doesn't mean I have to agree with every move he makes. Oh, I thought you were a D'Antonio guy. I am, but that's that a, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you're a slap. That's a stubborn old man move. Mm-hmm. And you know, I and it was the same thing. Like I'm sure there were times that Jim Harbaugh did things where you're like, "Hey, listen, I'm still, I'm still Team Harbaugh." But what the hell was that? And it is just it, Jim the TCU Leland, playoff right? game, the entire thing. Right, Jim Leland is another one. Okay, like how can you not like Jim Leland? Crazy old man doing crazy old man things. Okay, but yes, a thousand times. What are you doing putting Don Kelly in? Like, stop it. Knock it off already, okay? We, we could go on and on with things like that, but it's people like, oh, dude, I thought you liked Leland. I thought you liked Antonio. I thought you liked Larkin. It, 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 blow, it blows my mind. Harbaugh having gunners on trouble with the snap, right? You yeah, can still true. Be all, you can or still just be running all one, run one stretch play on that fucking drive and then it doesn't happen just one stretch play oh man i still that was still i told you that was the first time i swore in front of my daughter like seriously i cried after that game i was so upset. so did one of my buddies like i i'm not joking i i know that i i've been very good to the swear jar here but i did not swear around my kids and you have to remember lauren was almost 11 at the time. And I, I I just didn't swear in front of them. And we had a rule. If you swore in the house, you had to drink vinegar. And when that game ended, I let a barrage go. And she, she's just screaming vinegar, vinegar. And it was the best tasting vinegar I ever had in my life. Unbelievable. All right. We got to get out of here. Listen, what's, um, what's your schedule? Again. What's the schedule for the rest of the week? Uh, so we have what the puck Houghton Houghton gremlins in the house on Wednesday. I believe we have the golf show on Thursday. I have to hook up. I'm, I'm going to talk with Shep and we'll figure out Shep and I'll probably do a couple, but whatever you want to do one Friday. I don't give a crap. Yeah. We want to do, do one Friday. Yeah. We can you do it. Friday. What time? Friday morning, Friday night. What works best for you? Uh, I don't think it matters. Okay. We'll, whatever we'll whatever works best for, we have each other's contact info luckily so we can we can figure out a time but this is uh, great about this like live on the dumb show do you want to do it do you want to do one tomorrow sure let's do it okay. i'll see you tomorrow night that sounds fantastic no, let's, let's let's do it i'm not no come on there there's so much can we do it at a B-dubs? I would love to do it at a B-dubs. Are you could. kidding me? We could. I'd, I'd have spicy garlic all over my face. I love we that. We could easily do one. Yeah, jar, baby. We got, we got him, boys. We got him. <laughs> we got him, boys. Sounded like David Lynch. We got him, boys. <laughs> Uh, all right, we got to get out of here. All right, we'll we'll talk to you again tomorrow. If you guys aren't doing anything, come join us tomorrow. We're all dying for football, so we'll talk more football. And we're gonna football. hear what Sean is afraid of for the Lions season. I mentioned tomorrow it, but I'll night. go into greater detail. Definitely. All right, see you guys. Peace. <laughs> Off the air with Sean Belegian, featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak, produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.